again, I'm Leroy Roberts. Uh, uh, welcome to my Sunday School class. I uh, am Associate Pastor here at Forks Assembly of God in Forks, Washington. Uh, you can find us on our webpage at churchinforks.org. And if you go to that webpage site and you click on the link, Adult Sunday School class, that's where you'll find me. You can also uh, find me on Facebook. So uh, as an associate pastor, uh, I am a Sunday school teacher, and one of the things I like to do is if you're a new believer or you're visiting our church for the first time, uh, words and phrases that we uh, will talk, uh, uh, you'll hear in church if you're a visitor and you don't quite have an understanding, that's what I try and do is bring a little bit of uh, education as to what those words or phrases mean. Uh, I also have been recently teaching on the doctrines of the Assembly of God. Uh, the Assembly of God uh, Fellowship uh, Church has a, uh, a, a certain uh, set of doctrines. We call them the 16 Fundamental Truths, and that is basically what we believe is a church. And so I've been teaching on uh, those uh, doctrines. Last week, I taught on the doctrine of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I'd like to read to you what we believe as a church. <clears throat> All believers are entitled to and should ardently expect and earnestly seek the promise of the Father, the baptism in the Holy Spirit and fire, according to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ. This was the normal experience of all in the early Christian church. With it comes the endowment of power for life and service, the, the bestowment of the gifts and their uses in the work of the ministry. So that is uh, what I talked about last week. And this week, what I'd like to talk to uh, you about uh, is the uh, initial evidence of being filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, that is um, one of our beliefs is that when you are filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the power of God to be a witness, there is an initial physical evidence of speaking in tongues. And I'd like to read that to you. The baptism of believers in the Holy Spirit is witnessed by the initial physical sign of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives them utterance. Now, the key word here is, as the Spirit of God gives them utterance. So it's a work of the Holy Spirit. So the assemblies of God are distinct in that we believe that Jesus Christ uh, gave the power of the Holy Spirit, we call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit, for all believers uh, to be witnesses. And what happens is when you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is an initial physical evidence of speaking in tongues, and we believe that, and that makes us what uh, a little bit different in our that we believe in the spiritual power of God to work in a person's life through the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Now, that first happened in Acts 2, 1 through 4. The promise of the Father was this. God said to his disciples after his resurrection on Easter, he was crucified, he died, put in the grave, and then he rose from the grave and he met with the disciples and he was with them for about 40 days. And then he said, I, I, I'm going back to the Father, but I need you to tarry in Jerusalem where I will send the promise of the Father, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and fill you that you might be a witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Samaria, and all parts of the world. So that's what they were doing in chapter 2 of Acts. They were all together in an upper room, and they were seeking the power of God. So I would like to read that to you, Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The key again is that the Spirit of God gave them this tongue or this different language. Initially what happens is they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they're ecstatic about being filled with the presence of God. They don't care 
Prior to this, they were in fear because uh, 50 days prior to this, their, their leader, Jesus Christ, had been uh, put on a cross. He was crucified. He was put in the grave, but they, they saw his resurrection. He came back to them alive, and he was with them for a short while, and this is now 50 days later. They were still walking in a little bit of fear here because they've lost their leader. He's, he's gone back up to heaven, but he says, Terry in Jerusalem, where I will send you the promise of the Father or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They get received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They are just ecstatic with the power of God. And it says they drew a crowd that they were getting so loud with their praise and worship in another tongue, not their native language, in other tongues. And uh, Peter then, under the same power, who previously had been walking in fear, now becomes a completely different man filled with the power of God and he starts to preach and it says that over uh, 5,000 people were there and 3,000 of them actually uh, heard the message that he preached. They uh, made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior and uh, th th they were added to the church about 3,000 that day. So you can see this dramatic change. But with this power came the evidence of speaking in tongues. I'd like to give you another instance where the Holy Spirit comes upon a group of people and again, they start proph prophesying in tongues. And that is in Acts 19, one through seven. I'd like to read that to you. And it happened while Apollos was at, was at Corinth that Paul, Apollos is a, uh, is a disciple of Christ. He's traveling to Corinth where Paul previously was. And now Paul has come down to Ephesus where Apollos was. Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him that is on Christ Jesus so now they understand Christ Jesus so it says in verse 5 when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and when Paul had laid hands on them the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied now the men were about 12 in all. So again, we see where they are filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they start speaking in this language and prophesying of God. Now I would just like to share a little bit. This language doesn't necessarily mean it's a language that uh, of other nations or that other people can hear. The first initial time that God fills them, the, the, the 120 in the upper room, they are actually prophesying in a known language to other people because on the day of Pentecost, there is a great large number of people there that have come to Jerusalem for the festival of Pentecost. And so when they start speaking in tongues, it's actually understood by the people around them. And they start prophesying about the Lord Jesus Christ and his majesty and his glory and they are drawn and to, to uh, attention to this. And so in this instance, it doesn't say that they are speaking in a language that's known to anybody. It's just a language that God enables them to speak. And so in Corinthians, I'd like to take you now to Corinthians 14, one through t, uh, two, Paul is teaching the Corinthians. He sends them a letter and he's teaching them on this, the gifts of the Holy Spirit as they are all being filled with the Holy Spirit and they have these different various gifts. One is the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they're speaking in tongues. And he brings some teaching about speaking in tongues and prophesying. And chapter 14, verse 1, it says this, Pursue love. Again, he's talking to these people uh, about being witnesses for Christ. And he says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So speaking in a tongue does not necessarily mean it has to be a known tongue. It's just a tongue that's being spoken unto God. It's, it's a mystery, but it's something that we can perceive and, and, and uh, expect when being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, 
I thought about better ways of trying to explain this. And so if you don't mind, I'd like to just share a couple of instances of people that I know, including myself, that have actually been filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, 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 there's a man that I know, his name is Levi, Levi Sturgeon. Him and his wife, Alyssa, new Christians, uh, being used of God, they actually had an opportunity, again, new Christians, to go down into Bolivia. Now, Levi had been uh, seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the power to be a witness prior to this. But in this, in this trip to Bolivia, he hasn't been filled yet. Well, there's an opportunity for his wife to speak at an elementary school. And this is the first time for her too. She's, she's actually the one who's going to be speaking and, and prophesying and declaring the good things of God to these kids. And so Levi and uh, his other supporters, they're on off the platform and they're praying for her. She's getting ready to speak. And Levi is just praying, oh Lord, please just give her the power, give her the, the ability to glorify your name. And he's praying and all of a sudden he just feels this unction of power come upon him. And finally he loses his, his own language and he starts just proclaiming the things of God in an unknown language, not even to him, but he's just going for it. He's just being filled with the baptism the Holy Spirit. So you see, he wasn't seeking it for himself. He was just glorifying God and asking God to move, and he himself was filled. That's a that's a wonderful story. Uh, and then I would like to share you my own story. I too had been perceiving or pursuing the baptism of the Holy Spirit for for several years, and. Um, uh, one time, uh, our church, uh, an evangelist came to our church, a visiting evangelist, and he had brought the word of God, and he had encouraged us, and he was there just to encourage our church. Afterwards, uh, we were worshiping God as a group, and he was just going down the line praying for different people as uh, they had need or just to encourage them and pray for them. And when he came to me, I was just... Uh, really enjoying the presence of God through worship. And he asked me, Leroy, how can I pray for you? And I didn't even think about it. I just said, I just want whatever God wants for me. You know, isn't that the heart? Just whatever God wants uh, for me, uh, through me, whatever I can do to have a, a closer relationship with God. And as he starts praying for me, I just felt the presence of God just came down on me powerfully. And words started coming out of my mouth. Oh, I'm getting excited even today. That, that I didn't understand, but I didn't care. I just was at that, uh, in the perfect attitude that I just didn't care. I just wanted more of God. And he started just pouring out his spirit on me. And I started speaking in this tongue and it was loud. And I, I, it was just an amazing event. Since then, there have been more gifts that have followed that, but I still speak in tongues anytime I'm in the presence of God and I'm worshiping God. And I, what I'd like to do to, is talk to you a little bit uh, this morning about some things that we can do to prepare ourselves to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Like I say, uh, for both me and Levi both, we were not seeking the gift, we were just seeking God. So it's not the gift, we're, we're not here to receive the gift, but we're receiving what he has to give to us. That's, he's giving the gift, we're not receiving, looking for the initial gift, we're just receiving more of God. We're praising him. Uh, one thing that, uh, it was a place of worship, we were just seeking God, verbally seeking God. Uh, when, if you're going to receive a verbal gift, you got to be verbal about your praise and your worship and seeking that gift. You got to be allowing yourself to be actually opening up your mouth. So, and, and then you need to relax. Uh, you got to remember that these people were 10 days. The they initial, they had been seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit for 10 days in an upper room. I had been seeking the Lord, but uh, probably seeking the gift and not so much the Lord. That's the key thing that we need to understand. Seeking the gift is not the, uh, the, the, the attitude we need to have. We just need to be seeking more of God. And he gives us the gift. So he's the gift giver. Uh, another thing is, again, we got to leave our native language. If God starts moving on you and he puts you, uh, fills you and gives you a language, you got to be comfortable speaking that language. Now, it's going to sound odd to you, yes, because it's a foreign language. It's not you're not used to this language. But you got to remember, this is between you and God. This has nothing to do with anybody else. And I will promise you, it's 
God giving you the words, if he's giving you the words, then you just got to trust that it's God's doing it. So you're not having to make this up. You're not making it up. You just have to be willing to just let go and let God. Um, it is a gift that is just the initial gift. It's the initial gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There are other gifts that, that uh, to this day, I am actually a pastor now because of the filling of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's just given me a boldness to teach, an understanding of the word, an understanding of his presence. So I want to encourage you that if uh, you're in your walk with the Lord, seek the promise of the Father, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit comes upon you, just be bold. Just allow your tongue to be loosed by the Holy Spirit and give Him praise. Again, I want to thank you for joining my class this morning. God bless you.